This is my week seven video log for my independent study working on gunship. Um, this week I continued working on the multi-threading support within the collision detection system. Um, what you can see right now is the updated, uh, the updated version of that that includes a major imp performance improvement to the collision detection system. Um, previously, I think the numbers were, it was like 20 milliseconds for collision detection with eight worker threads um, when I wasn't doing the video recording. Um, after this week, it is now down to eight milliseconds with eight worker threads, or eight to 10 milliseconds, a little bit of fluctuation in there, um, which is another major performance improvement and actually gets me much closer to my target performance mark for, the bench, for uh, my benchmark tests. Um, the example you can see running now is not the same as the one, or it's very close to the one that was running before. Um, this is still 10,000 cubes, or it's it's 5,000 cubes, uh, 5,000 spheres. Um, but now instead of being in a, in a 100 by 100 area that was flat, it's in a 100 by 100 by 100 cube. Um, so there's a little bit more room, and it's also more beneficial to do, I'm doing a, a sub- partitioning of the space. Um, each worker thread works on one eighth of the total space. So doing a, an actual three-dimensional area b makes it easier to subdivide because I can just, I subdivide, I cut it in half along X, Y, and Z, whereas it's, a, it's harder to do if I'm doing it just within a flat area. Um, though the, the principle still works the same with the flat test, I can just, it's, I can only subdivide it into along X and Y um, but otherwise, I still gain a, a major performance benefit by doing the worker threads. Um, so what you can see printing out is a little bit of a, a logging that I do. Um, I, for, each of the, for each of the work units, I track when I, I set up a start point basically at the top of, I set the start time basically at the, stop, the, start, the top of the update for the grid collision system. Um, and then I have each worker thread marked down when it receives the work unit, um, when it finished the broad phase pass, which involves putting everything into the into the grid, the hash grid and tracking where the two colliders are in the same grid cell. Um, I have it marked down when it finishes narrow phase, and then I have the uh, the main thread mark when it received each work unit from the worker threads, and that's giving me a little bit of a tool to help see what's going on and also m assure me that I'm actually getting proper parallelism out of the uh, out of my my thread pool um, and you can see that in, they do this this is happening at the same time like all the uh, all the worker threads receive their work units at about the same time and they all return them at about the same time uh, so they are all they all are running in parallel which is good um, and you'll notice that I do occasionally run into some strange things like this, where you'll see that seven of the eight worker threads uh, receive their work units, but then it's not until after all of the other ones have completed that the last work unit gets grabbed, um, or sometimes one work unit will be grabbed a little bit later than the other work units. Um, I'm not 100% sure why that's happening, my theory is that it's because I'm using up so much of the CPU's resources that um, my worker threads are getting preempted by other threads and as a result aren't being run. Like there's just other high priority threads in other processes on the computer that are just preempting my threads and I can't, um, my computer has eight CPU's so I can't be running, if I'm running eight worker threads at the same time, it would be using up all of the resources on the on the computer. Um, so I think that's what's going on. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but one of the things that I have been noticing that I think derives from that same problem is when I run my grids, when I run my grid test with um, eight worker threads, all the threads run at the same time and they each take about, they take eight to 10 milliseconds to do their portion of the work and get everything together. So my entire grid system takes about eight to 10 milliseconds to run. Um, if I still split it up into eight, eight work regions, 
but I only have one worker thread that runs over each of them in turn, it, it'll only take that one worker thread about three milliseconds to do each individual work unit, but it has to go through all those, it goes through all those work units in serial, so it still takes like 24 or 25 milliseconds for it to do all of them. But for each individual work unit, it's taking less than half the time that each that an individual thread does when I'm work, running eight work units. And that's a little bit frustrating because if I could get my if I could get down to that speed with eight work units, if I could have each of those eight work units or worker threads only take three milliseconds, that would that update time would drop to like three or four milliseconds, which would put me right at my, my like target performance mark. Um, and I can't, I've profiled it a bunch. I've like looked at it really far and there's nothing I can, there doesn't seem to be any, um, any like locking or waiting issues. None of the threads are ever like waiting on each other. There's no interaction between any of the worker threads. They all run completely independently of each other. Um, at least as far as I can tell. So the only thing that I can think of at this point that's, that would explain why the individual threads are running slower when there are more threads is because the, the OS is throttling my threads so that I don't use up all of the CPU's resources. However, this is my first time ever doing anything with multi-threading um, and parallelism, so I don't know enough to say for certain. Um, so I'd have to, I'm going to keep doing some research and looking into it, but if I don't make um, more headway on this soon, I'm going to stop worrying about it and go back to trying to um, optimize, get performance gains through just in improving the algorithm and doing other changes. Um, and there is still more work to be done with this, uh, this multi-threaded solution because since I'm splitting it up into different work units, um, right now I'm just splitting everything along like the X, the X, Y, and Z axes. Um, but if, say, if the, the cluster of objects wasn't centered around the origin, then that wouldn't really work well. So I've got, I've got to do a little bit of work to make sure that I to like track the, the bounds that all the objects are in so that I can actually break down my work units in a, in a correct way so that I'm not like, I don't have just like one object in one area and all the objects in the other one. Um, and there's, there's other like minor things that I've got to do in terms of correctness to make sure that this, this, uh, this multi-threaded solution still works in, um, in, in real game situations. Um, so if I, I don't make much, if I don't make much more headway with this, with the multi-threaded problem, that shouldn't be too much because of an issue because it's already, um, been a huge improvement to my performance overall. Um, so yeah, that, that was really all I worked on this week. Uh, I just, I've been working really hard to try to figure out why my threads are slower when I've got more threads. Um, and I haven't made much headway with that. Um, so that's it for this week. I will see you next week.